How's everybody doing today? You know, Pastor Patty gave me a call today, and she said, she, you know, she told Pastor Nelly to ask me if I would do my testimony. And I said, sure. But the first thing that popped in my mind was to go home, to cut my hair, to shave. And then I started really thinking about it, because if I would have done that, I would have got stuck in the mirror. And when I look at myself these days in the mirror, I get stuck for the simple fact that the work that Jesus Christ has done in me, I can't believe. I cannot believe what he's done inside of me. I'm not going to go so much into the drugs today, but I'll just let you know that I, tr I've tr I have struggled with drugs for 25 years off and on. And the King's Way was a place for me where I found my roots. I, I was in the pursuit of looking for a, pl a spiritual place where I could go and find God and get to know him a little bit more. But all the churches that I walked into, they were dead. There was a bunch of mannequins sitting around, and my spirit did not uh, uh, go towards that. So finally, I came to the, to the King's Way, and I was, I was broken spiritually. I was broken f physically, and they started feeding me. And I just got to be honest with you. When I seen Pastor Miguel, okay, when I seen Pastor Miguel and the way he carried himself, that's what I wanted. There was something inside of him that I wanted. So as I started to pursue for God and started coming into the church culture, I started realizing that everybody's doing a different type of walk. I started noticing that inside the church, not everybody was unified in glory. You know, I started realizing that people come to church with the Bible under their hand and then go through the door and they do something different. And I started, I started saying to myself, these are a bunch of Christians. And I turned around and I went back out to the streets. I went back to what I was familiar with. I went back out into what, to what I was comfortable with. But I really wanted God. So finally, I came back. And as I came back, the certain men around the fellowship started embracing me again. And they started asking me the question, are you going to Bible school? Now, the first time when I, when I came into uh, the Kingsway, I was starting to build up, and they were, tr they were trying to encourage me to go to Bible school. But I was still fighting my drug addiction. And resulting from that, as time got closer, I ran back to what I was familiar with. So, so this time when I came back around now, and everybody started pressuring me, I, I learned some of the lingo, you know. So when they said, are you going to Bible school? I would simply say to them, well, you know, I, I have to get confirmation from God. I, I, I learned some of the lingo. And then as the, as the stakes started going up higher, it was Pastor Miguel. He came to me and said, Norm, are you going to Bible school? I said, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Oh, I know what to do. I have to get confirmation, Pastor Miguel. But anyways, one day up here in this campground, I came on a Sunday up to the little tent up there, and Eagle's Nest used to fellowship up there. And in the spirits... I felt something, and I seen something. I noticed Dr. Russ was starting to circle around, and I could feel his eyes. And finally, he got to me, and he started saying to me, are you going to Bible school? You know, uh, great things have been happening with you. And as I was standing there, I couldn't stand no more. You know, I started falling all over the place. And that's, that was my confirmation. I made that step. I, stepped, I said to Dr. Russ, if you can stop, I'm going to Bible school. I didn't have the money. But I took that, that step, and I committed myself. So as Bible school drew nearer, I didn't have the money, but I believe if God wanted me to go to Bible school, he would provide the money. And I want to tell you, we serve a good God. We serve a loving God. He provided the money for me. The money came from another church that I've never been in before. They paid, they paid two years of my tuition. The other, the other great thing that happened was I owned a house, and due to my crack addiction, I just walked away from it. I left it full of furniture, expensive furniture. I just walked away from it. And while I was in Bible school, I got a phone call. And oh, this is two years later after the house had been sold. And there was $47,000 sitting in a trust fund from the sale of the house. $47,000 two years later. And when I, I'm going to tell you, I left this house in, the, in bad condition. 
a roof that was leaking, deck was taken off, broken furnace, things all over the place. But, you know, when you make a commitment to God and he wants you to serve him, he'll make a way for you. He'll make a way for you. And I, I, just, I just thank him so much today that, uh, that he loves upon me. Because I've been, I've been broken, I've been hurt, I've been, I've, been, I've been orphaned. And I just thank God that I'm here today, that I'm able to stand in front of you and to give my testimony. This is something that I could never do before. But now that he has strengthened me and encouraged me, I'm here today. And I just want to thank, I just want to thank God for sa- sending Dr. Russ here and sending men like Pastor McGill and other guys that I've seen walk in the walk, Roger, uh, uh, Rene, all these guys. I watch them. I sit and I watch. If I'm sitting and watching, the other guys that are coming off the street, they come in here too and they sit and watch. And this is why we have to be unified in the glory. This is why we have to be unified. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to be honest, I'm going to tell you the truth. There's some people I don't like. Okay? But I'm going to tell you, I love them all. I love every single person. But I don't like them all. I don't have much more to say than that. Amen.